beautifuls and beloveds, how are you doing? But yes, I am back. Um, so I want to play around with music a little bit. And if you're a dancer that doesn't sing, this might not pertain to you, but you should at least be familiar with it. And I'm not going to say right now my voice is not really warmed up. And um, I don't know if it's going to be really warmed up anytime soon today. So, but I do want to get this out now, so bear with me. I am a professional performer. I know a lot about song, dance, music, performance, and I had a few hurdles to overcome. So I had a cancer treatment. There's several things that happened. Um, when I was a tiny wee one, and I have documentation of this, I received an MM, MMR, is that right? Measles, mumps, rubella shot? I think that's what it is, an MMR. But um, in the process of doing so, they gave me the wrong shot. I was too young. Why'd that happen? They almost killed me. And my mother was pissed, completely furious, and well, she should be. And that caused damage to my hearing. And then the cancer treatment did as well because I had extreme fevers. And now with the car accident, you know, it comes and goes. It's really interesting. So hopefully once all the healing happens up here that everything will be fine. I know what to do. And, uh, you know, so I had to make adjustments. And the adjustments were very difficult. Now, the things that I know about sound is that when you cup your ears like this, boy, can I really hear my voice. So you might see me sometimes going like this, singing into it or speaking into it. You, you can direct sound this way and really hear yourself. And it almost sounds like I'm in a sound booth speaking very clearly and very, um, uh, how can I say it? You know, that's, it's being sweetened is a, a term that's used where it's balanced because uh, women's voices especially, for some reason, the depths of their voices are not always picked up. So I do have a depth, just like other women, to their voices. And when I go like this, I can really hear it. And I'm like, oh, there I am. And plus, you know, because of the hearing loss and accidents and stuff like that, it can be very challenging. Um, when I'm in a bigger area, a vast area, with high ceilings, depth, it's harder to hear. Well, that's because the sound is not bouncing off of really anything. In a narrow corridor, you can I can hear better. Beloved, if you were ever wondering why you were like getting suspicious, well, how is that, remember what you said, how is it that you can hear? Because we were walking in a hallway and your voice was bouncing off the walls that were within two feet of each uh, our, ourselves. That's how. No, you were not onto something like catching me in a lie. So I can show you my tests even. I can show you my, my baby doctor records that say all of this stuff too. So yeah, high fevers can definitely cause hearing damage, accidents, uh, loud sounds. You know, and, and in a sense, at this point, I have a lot of protection from stuff like that because um, it's already damaged and it, it acts like almost as a buffer, too. Um, so another thing, and I have like the constant ringing, as annoying as anything, but, you know, I know how to deal with it now. You get used to it and you drown it out. But now, this is also another kind of a, a testament and a testimony. How much louder are all of these helicopters and the people all around us being if it sounds that loud to me with having a hearing problem, you know, loss of hearing, uh, due to no fault of my own, you know? So that's just a quick little lesson in sound. The closer you are to something, it bounces right off, like, and you can hear it better because it's closer. If I turn this way, my, my voice is going to bounce off of whatever objects are there. If I turn this way, it's going to bounce to me quicker and I can hear myself better. If I turn this way, there's more of a distance with the objects between where I am versus here or here or even behind me. So it all acts as um, 
you know, a, a sounding board. You know, he bounced something off of somebody and hence where the term kind of came from, right? And other things too, but you get the idea. Um, so what I want to talk to you about, and I hope I can demonstrate this, I just want to get the point across. If you want to critique my singing, fine, but I don't think it'll sound that bad, but I'm not warmed up. Um, but different things you can do with your voice and sound to create different pitches, different effects. Um, so I'm going to use something of a lullaby and um, it's from... It's from a, maybe a hymn? I don't know now. We'll give credit. I just don't recall right now. You know what? Let me use something else because I know we have permission to use it. Um, it's something that uh, Mr. Nielsen wrote and we used to use it in, in um, worship leading practice. We had um, we were leadership in, in a church, my husband and I. It's akin to being an associate pastor. We are not going to do that ever again because we, that time had come and gone. And uh, with, with our history of being artists, with me the way I dress, we would be torn to shreds over that. And we don't want to put the church and Christians and the brother and the brethren through all of that, you know. Plus, we're not called. We did what we did. We minister on a one-on-one -on -one level and through our art. You know, you're never going to see a religious piece done by us, except for what we did for the Passion Play. But anyway, uh, the ministry happens here in the heart, like normal people. Uh, so uh, the song is uh, "All Praise to the Father," and it's uh, Abba. It's a Jewish term to refer to the Lord. So now I'm using this because I can't think of another song that I have permission to use. And I'm not just singing one phrase real quick. And, um, you know, I don't want people to have problems with it. So I'm just going to sing this. So uh, listen to the quality of my voice. I'm going to go like this to help myself because I have not necessarily sung in here and remember how it's supposed to sound. Um, all praise to the Father. Now, I could sing that. That was my full voice. Not loud in volume, but my normal singing voice. Now, if I sang it in falsetto, All praise to the Father. There's a different tonal quality to it. It's softer. The apparatus in which how and which I sing is more up here, and it's sent more to the roof of my mouth. Now, without sounding nasally, that takes a lot of practice. That means you have to not only send it to the roof of your mouth to reach the softer, higher registers. That wasn't really high for me, but um, you also want to keep it in here your diaphragm pulled in and up without sucking in. You're not holding your breath because that's bad. So you want to pull it up. Up is a better way, not in, but up. And that's something my, my yoga instructor was working with me on because my thing here is like, but beloved, it's the stuff they're spraying in the air that gives me this gut. It, it's not that. <laughs> you know, when I don't go outside and I do everything I'm supposed to, it's like, she would love to see it now, but anyway, it's just up and it's, can you see that? It's right, it's here. So you want to send it up and keep it here. So praise to the Father. It still has a fullness to it without sounding too nasally. Otherwise it'd be, I'll praise to the Father. <laughs> sounds ridiculous. Oh my gosh, I don't like how it sounds. Um, but you, can you hear the tonal quality and the difference, right? So the idea is when you're singing it higher, and that's not high for me, but it could be for some people. I just wanted to give an example of where you have to carry the air in a sense. And it takes a lot of practice. It's not like you can just do it. Although we're born being belly breathers. Did you know that? That's so important with singing. It's so important with carrying your voice. And if you have to send it to the back of the room, you really, do you hear how I'm doing it? It's almost like um, an accordion or uh, what do you call it? Uh, playing the bagpipes and you 
whoosh it out and I can feel and I'm doing it to myself and it it's something that babies are born like that and for somehow some reason I'm not sure it happens we learn how to speak here in our throats and we're not breathing right anymore so the key to singing is breathing and learning how to carry a, a sound and make it last long longer than just saying a word like go let's actually practice with that so if you go go you're just speaking now hold it a little bit don't try to sing just say go go right um that's not necessarily saying or be kind of like mm, gotta work on that technique a little bit right so how do you make it sound like you're singing it instead of just speaking it and having it last long well it's where you put your air and where your voice is coming from so let's sing the word go go and i'm using my whole body as my instrument and i might not be the best person to teach somebody how to go from just speaking the word go go to singing the word go and then you kind of have it vibrate a little bit without going overdoing it right <laughs> all this is technique and it takes a lot of time so you want to get attuned to hearing your voice and how it sounds to yourself and getting over the recording it and playing it back and go oh, I sound like that I hate it who doesn't do that I used to until I learned how to develop my voice and figure out when I'm being recorded with very poor equipment and not to be over critical of myself um, I've been singing since the time I was well you saw the pictures here me and the little one and I was a wee one I was probably maybe I maybe younger, I don't know exactly, but I can remember when I was five for sure. That's what we did in kindergarten and we put on plays all the time. And uh, my mom used to sing to me and she could not sing. She could not sing to, to do anything with it. I was like, oh, please mom. But it's your mom, you love your mom. Sorry mom, I'm not being hypercritical of you or anything. She knows. <laughs> it's like, I'm not a singer. <laughs> Bless her heart. But she would sing a lot of, we had a sing-song game that we would do. She would uh, sing, Here Comes the Sun to Me. Well, you know that. And I used to have my, um, my alarm, my digital alarm with the ringtone, Here Comes the Sun to Wake Me Up. It made me feel good. Here comes the sun. And I'll say, it is going to be alright, you know that? So... Singing is just so much fun, isn't it? And really, anybody can sing, anybody can dance. You just need it trained, honed in on that. Um, so that's just a little basic thing, really. Very elementary, but you can practice with it. And again, like I said, I may not be the one to actually teach you how to go from just speaking it and holding that note to actually singing it. Um, I know how to do it, but to explain it is a little bit more challenging because one day it just clicked for me and I'm not sure what it was. So you might want to do a search on the internet and uh, see who does know how to teach you that. Or maybe if you hang around me enough, if you're like one of my best homies or something like that, I can really help you. But other than that, um, so my husband and I, we sing. And my dad, I was on the phone with him, this is so cute, I love him. He's like, have you an inadvertent part two got kind of screwed up. Okay, so part two. So I was on the phone with my dad, like I was saying, he's so cute, I love him. And um, he's like, did you and hubby, my hubby, ever think about um, getting back into uh, singing gospel music again? And I'm like, yeah, we not really thought about seriously because like I said that's some serious ministry and I'm not saying we haven't and we won't cut another um, Christian gospel themed album I'm not saying that at all we have a couple albums out they're floating around 
somewhere. I don't know where they are right now. And, you know, it's, it's highly unlikely that we'll do it as a ministry, but sure, we'll probably cut a few more albums out, but we, we can't. I hope you guys understand, we just can't go back to that. Um, not only are we kind of concerned about the state of some churches, we might guest do it, but like I said, you know, not that what I was wearing was defiling myself or an abomination in front of the Lord. It's just that I don't want to go through the scrutiny. I mean, really, God's not calling us back to doing that. He told us you're released from that, which, you know, good, bad. We do it privately. We do it, like I said, guesting is a different issue and people would have to be okay knowing the fact that, you know, I dance half naked. <laughs> But you see what I mean? I'm very comfortable with my body. It doesn't mean that I'm living in sin. But as a regular thing, it could be a stumbling block for some brothers and sisters. So that's why we would never return to it regularly. But bless my dad's heart. he He's more open to it. And he thought we did a great job. And, you know, I was just talking about sound, how it travels, how it can bounce back to you and why. Things aren't always what they seem. I learned that too. Um, but I've also learned, wait for the evidence too. And we have plenty of it. So you bad guys, don't even, even if you try to use that. We have people bigger than us, higher places than us that are, you know, they know. So I wouldn't push or walk. Um, but let's get back to happier things here. Um, with sound and all of this, you get to excuse me, you get to um, learn how to uh, present it. And again, getting tying it back to what I was talking about. Presentation does matter, and I really don't. I don't want to cause my brethren to stumble. I don't want. You know, they're like, well, look how she dresses. I would never dress that way in a church. It's inappropriate. But, you know, it's meat sacrifice to idols, like the Apostle Paul said. And plus, you know, I wouldn't, I don't feel like too much. But anyway, you know, in singing uh, Christian music, and I was just using an example of some of a song we used to sing. And we didn't write it. Um, again, Mr. Nielsen. Uh, Richard, <laughs> my head is like, <laughs> what was his name? Um, and it was a beautiful song, it was a praise and worship song. So when you sing, uh, let's get back to it. All praise to the Father. So I'm singing it in a different place. You can sing it higher. All praise to the Father. So I'm sending it higher up because it's a higher register. Not not too challenging for me at all, but it's higher up. So I got to keep the support here so it has doubt, but send it to the roof of my mouth, the palate. And um, it, it's an instrument. This body is your instrument and it's very fun. I find it so fun. Um, now, that's a certain type of singing. So let's also uh, look at different forms of singing. Uh, that's worship music. It's sung in a different way, different cadence, a different thrust behind it. We would hope that people are using it for ministry for good purposes and not manipulative or, hold on a second, or something to harm anybody. Come on now. Uh, Right. You gotta do what you gotta do to get through it, right? Um, uh, my head just little hurts. Oh, that's another thing. Sometimes when my head gets really bad like that, I check and see if it's sinuses. When I'm singing, I, I breathe and inhale in my mouth more, and that's how I access. Some people use their noses and stuff. I find that I have better luck I'm going to use this instead of, because it takes longer to go and then the note out than it, 
because it's more in out instead of in here and then for me you might find another technique that works better for you it's all legitimate but because i'm not breathing through my nose it it you know it's like holding my nose i can even hold my nose if i don't want to sing but that way the toxins or whatever doesn't get up into my sinuses which can trigger migraines too very interesting stuff um but you know i know so many ways around it now so if i start singing it, it goes away pretty quickly and then i know oh it's sinus so then i know i gotta do all this stuff and i adapt uh oh and my hands are clearing up remember we were like is it something on the steering wheel is it from outside why are my blood vessels like flaring up like that yeah, they're repairing okay good um so what was i gonna say um so when you're singing when you're singing keep in mind too that there are different ways you can sing it um you know rock and roll music has more of a very i don't want to say guttural but coming from your gut it really i really don't want to give an example of it you've heard me wail it's wailing right it is powerful and i i know how to do it my pipes a little thing like me and i i just don't want to disturb people around me right now plus i really don't need them recording my voice doing a certain song and then god knows what's going to happen on the internet with it you know because when I belt it out, it's like, hold them ears. Um, but you know, that, that has a different cadence to it. It has a different presentation to it, much different from gospel. Now you can do gospel rock, sure, why not? And it should be sung the same way if you want to be effective in that medium, in, in that uh, foray, what's it's another term you can use? Um, discipline, that discipline. Uh, yeah. So what else can I tell you about singing that can kind of help you while I'm just kind of hanging out here trying to clear up my sinuses? <laughs> Let's have fun, shall we? Um, uh, country music. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. My Nana loved it. Um, there are some country artists that I would say are my favorite, though, so I, I take that back. It depends what it is. I tend to steer away from the twangy twang stuff, but that's just a preference. I'm not saying that they're bad singers or anything, just preference. And, um, there, there are some really good country western singers that are almost like how contemporary rock and roll used to be in the 70s, like, uh, you know, Leonard Skinner. Sweet home Alabama. <laughs> I love playing that. You know, I play guitar too, right? And um, that that was like, uh, you know, considered mainstream kind of country rock. But nowadays, a lot of the uh, country rock is, is what mainstream or made it into the mainstream in the 70s and stuff. Like I said, Leonard Skinner. And, and it, it's all very interesting, isn't it? So, um, you know, my dad had gotten back to his roots in a sense. He's a Yankee, though. But he likes rock and roll music. So when we were talking, he's like, yeah, I'm starting to lean more towards uh, country music, country rock, even. And I'm like, I understand it. I understand why. He's so into God, country, and constitution, and everything like that. Bless his heart. He, he's, he's a good, good person. Good person. And I'm, I'm in this battle for him, too, because I don't want him struggling anymore. Good Lord, the things that he's been through. Bless his heart. So, um, just an aside. Uh, when you're singing, water, water, water. Keep it fluid, keep it fluid. Sometimes when your sinuses dry out, you can get migraines from that too. But hold on. Keep it fluid. Everybody has their own little thing to keep those pipes in shape. Like when I do a lot of these videos, even 
I'm doing things behind the scenes in between takes and stuff to keep my voice from going ribbit. <laughs> it sounds horrible. Of course it would. Um, and there are things you can do. Salt water is great. Doing a sinus flush with salt water. Not the ocean salt water. That can make you sick. Too high concentrate. But use uh, sea salt that's been refined and that's safe for consumption in a little bit of water. And it's a good saline moisturizer. It also helps fight some forms of bacterial infections and viruses, etc. And um, honey is great. Honey and lemon, hot lemon tea. Oh, there's so many great things. Um, here's something if you're really ballsy. Uh, spicy, spicy, spicy stuff. Yeah, that helps. That helps keep all of this clear. It helps uh, on many levels. So that's another tip too. Um, what else is good for your voice? Well, anything that helps your health in general is going to be good for your voice. Um, you know, keep it keep it soft and supple, just like just like your heart. Keep everything fluid and moving very well. Uh, what else can I say to help you? And while I'm just sitting here doing nothing, I might as well entertain you, right? Uh, yeah. So I believe everybody can sing. I believe that there are people who are more naturally inclined to it. Apparently, I, I was very naturally inclined to a lot of things, and I take no credit for it, and I just thank my Holy Savior for it and say thank you, but just because you can't at this moment doesn't mean that you will never get training. I really think that's like everybody's issue. You need training. You might be naturally inclined and you're all over the place. Get training and they will, they will saddle that up for you and, and help you fine tune your instrument. But if you have neither the inclination or any of that, maybe that's something just not for you on this planet. Maybe the hereafter. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I really think that everybody can. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it. But um, I'm going to do another video. I don't know what it's going to be about yet. Let's see how the muse affects me. <laughs> okay, so God bless you. Much love to you. And much peace and blessings. Dance Warriors signing out once again. We'll be back. Okay, I thought of some more. So, hello, beautifuls and beloveds. So, we're on the subject of music and sound. Do you know what the sound, it, I mean, sorry, do you know what the word means when it pertaining to sound as timber? Not timber as in wood, although that's a legitimate thing, you know, wood is your timber. I'm talking about when it pertains to sound, a timber. This is something else my dad said, that we, meaning my husband and I, sound really good together when we sing. This is also how I know that we were meant for each other. God help both of us sometimes. <laughs> but that's just how it goes. It's married life. What are you going to do? Um, what What is meant when he says that? Well, I, I know, it's a, it's a great compliment, but what it means is that the voices create a sound which also creates vibration and a fullness and a dynamic, a strong dynamic. And it doesn't happen with all voices, but that's what you want with um, choral singing or choir. You want that dynamic to have happen. And it doesn't always happen, but more often it will than not, because chances are you're dealing with many voices, so some people in there are going to just magically happen. Because, like I said, when you have more people involved, it's more likely. But for two people who are married, what are the chances of that? Well, it can happen, you know, but sometimes not. Um, but sometimes it does, and it's a natural thing, and with us it's completely natural. 
So uh, he even helped me a little bit fine tune my pipes as we got more heavy into our relationship. As I said, we were childhood, child, college, not child, college sweethearts. And, you know, it worked out well for us most, most of the time. <sighs> That's all I can say. Um, so when we're singing, we do create, a, create that timber. And we used a little meter one time, I don't remember what it was called, to register it to see what this timber was that we were creating. And it just went, the little needle, it was so fun to see. And it didn't always happen with us singing with somebody else. And we just have, after many years singing together, we knew how to fill in each other's empty spaces. So, um... Sometimes if I'm singing someplace, I'm, I'm usually pretty good at maintaining it. Sometimes, and I used to be the one that would go off key trying to find where is that note at. And if you're not singing with instruments, it can happen unless you're very familiar with that song. And so singing a cappella without instrumentation to help you find where that note is, you know, if I'm leading, he needs to, you know, kind of jiggle it around there a little bit until he finds it. He usually finds it right up and then he'll go off and then find it again. And with me, if he's leading and I'm not familiar with that key or I don't sing in that key normally, I have to ramp my way up a little bit and I'm like, oh my gosh. It's so much easier when you have an instrument. But also a skill to learn is to find where that note is when you're speaking or singing match it up so right now my voice speaking is hitting certain notes and when you sing it it definitely is certain notes so there's a way to find all of that and it's with practice um but let's get back to the timber thing so timber is almost an experiential thing too because you can almost feel it because there's vibration involved with it and because I trained a certain way, I can make my voice, and so can he, very, very full. And when he's filling in my, my empty spots and I'm filling in his, there's an overlap. And right here, right here is where that special magic can really, really happen with the sound quality of our voice, that, you know, timber. I think I'm explaining it well enough. I hope so. But not only is it getting up here, like because I'm a woman, of course I'm going to have a higher voice. And because he's a man, of course he's going to have a lower voice in most cases. But this right here is what we aim for. And it's, I'm telling you peeps, it is such a magical, experiential thing. I can feel him and he can feel me. And we just know that, hey, we got a great song here. We wrote something or we're doing a good good rendition of somebody else's song with permission, of course. Or, um, yeah, or something more supernatural than we can even figure out. But most of the time, it's, it's science. And it's learning how to do it. Now, I'm not necessarily the best person to educate you on how to, but I can define it. I can say what it is. I can demonstrate it with him if he was here. Um, let me see, I think we uploaded our Christmas, we sang Silent Night. <laughs> we purposely sang it bad, and then we accidentally sang it bad, and then we sang it good. And um, our son is also, he's not a singer, but he knows how to fake it. <laughs> and he knows how to fill in even more of our space because we are related. That is the best combination to have, if you ask me. You have husband, wife, child of some sort. Um, because not only is husband, wife in tune, right? Because the child is part both of mother and father, that person can then fill in everything normally. And that's what he does, even though he doesn't have a lot of training. He's just been around it. And he fills in and really completes the picture. So could you imagine even having like more children? What a beautiful, that's a choir, that's a beautiful sound. You know, think the Osmonds or the Jacksons and it, it's really, 
intense. And um, so if you want to listen to that, really, we sang really bad one version of it and then the other version, like, this is great. It sounded pretty good. Ugh. We didn't rehearse or practice it. We just said, hey, let's just go for it and see what happens. Good, bad, and different. What difference does it make? People who want to be overly critical, then, you know, that's where your heart is, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so anyhow, um, music is an amazing tool to uh, play with, and it's um, medicinal, it's remedial, it's all sorts of things. Music tames the savage beast, um, music helps calm you. And it's almost the same sensation of petting a cat. You can lower your blood pressure by petting a kitty. Not that I'm a kitty. Well, maybe that'll be my my earth animal. But <laughs> it's very relaxing. And music, hearing music, creating music, participating in the presentation of it, dancing to it, all, all that stuff is very very remedial, healing, medicinal, remedial to help in a therapeutic way, you know. Um, it's been used to help people learn how to hear again if they lost their hearing for a little while, they had surgery and now they can hear and, and training the ear again. And it, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. And also what's neat is that our DNA and the music scale, there's so many similarities with with just that kind of stuff alone. Um, wow, just wow. And somebody wants to say, oh, that's just accidental. That just so happened with science infinitesimally, infinitesimally impossible because that would mean that everything had to be at the right time and right place coincidentally, magically, millions of times and millions and millions and millions and millions of times. Same thing with species procreating. Oh, you mean that single cell and another single cell just happened to find each other and mate? The chances of that don't exist. You cannot compute that. Um, mathematicians. Mathematicians, they are the great converts because they figure out, put them to the test, say, compute that. Compute the formula that shows that happening just spontaneously. Not just once, but once for every species, for every sex, for every, every output and expression. Every flower, every form of bird, animal, plant life, they're like, oops, that can't happen. It's mathematically impossible. So yeah, mathematicians are the greatest converts because they're usually the ones that prove themselves wrong because it can't happen. I did that with my mom too, and she was like, because she was math, math oriented severely heavily that was her thing and what a genius and even she was like yeah you're right it's just speechless god bless it all right so um this is a little bit of a shorter video but um i don't think i have anything else to say about that but yeah timber is very interesting to play around with it's very interesting to discover it. It's very interesting to know that it doesn't always happen with all voices or whatever reason that is. Combination of voices, right? But uh, thanks, Dad. Thank you for your compliment. And, um, you know, thank you to our, our audience, our fans, our followers who really do enjoy when we sing together and perform for you and bring some delight to you. So hopefully this cheers you up and gives you that um, gumption to, to try and explore. Or maybe you just decide that, you know what, I'll leave that to you professionals. It's all good. Okay, so peace, love, and blessings. And do well with whatever it is you are called to do. I have faith in you that you can. Okay, bye.